to our other big story tonight, an arrest in a mass murder here in Indianapolis. We told you about it in a breaking news alert this morning. Indianapolis police have arrested a 17-year-old for the killing of six people Sunday, including an unborn child. My teammates Richard Essex begins our team coverage. Richard. Now, police have not released the name or a picture of the suspect, but police do believe that the suspect acted alone and that no one else was involved. By late morning, a handful of people that declined our invitation to talk were removing some personal items from the house. The crime scene tape has been removed in the neighborhood and is left with many unanswered questions. No one can say exactly what happened inside of this house in the 3400 block of Adams Street. Police have told us that six people were murdered in this house, including an unborn baby. Norvell Terry is a longtime Eastside community activist. He used to live in this neighborhood, and he had to come out to the house this morning to see for himself what happened. Look how close are these houses together, and ain't nobody seen nothing? Are you serious? Indianapolis police have arrested a 17-year-old male. The cops believe he acted alone. We don't know if he's still in high school, what relationship he had with the people inside the house, or if he was part of the family. We have to make sure that we protect uh, the juvenile's rights, the suspect in this case, and that we're protecting the witnesses until they've completed their, their part of the, the, the process. Around 4 Sunday morning, police found a teenager walking on 36th Street that had been shot. He led police back to the house where police found 42-year-old Kizzy Childs, 42-year-old Raymond Childs, 18-year-old Elijah Childs, and 13-year-old Rita Childs dead inside the house. 19-year-old Kiara Hawkins and baby boy Hawkins, the unborn child of Kiara Hawkins, later died at the hospital. Just please stop the violence. Anastasia Dittman is a friend of the family. I know everyone in the city right now is like just wondering what is going on, why is this happening, especially in the middle of a pandemic. It is just very devastating that we have to wake up to something like this in the morning. The probable cause is expected to be released sometime later this week. That will tell us the name of the suspect and possibly why he decided to take the lives of six people inside of that house. Now, I did talk to the Marion County Prosecutor's Office today. They do expect the suspect will be charged as an adult in this case. In Indianapolis, Richard Essex, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook. Richard, thank you. Mayor Joe Hogsett sent us this statement following the arrest. While nothing can bring back the child's family, I hope that the swift action of the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department offers some comfort to all of those who have been left to grapple with this tragic loss. The crime scene on Adams Street reminded many of one of the worst mass shootings in the city's history. It happened back in June 2006. Police say two men broke into a home on Hamilton Avenue and shot and killed seven people. Three of the victims were children. Police later arrested James Stewart and Desmond Turner. They say Stewart and Turner went to the home to rob a safe. Stewart said Turner started shooting everybody. Both were convicted. Turner was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Stewart was given 425 years in prison. The house where the shootings happened burned down years later and was eventually bulldozed. Well, Sunday's killings bring new focus on the work to stop violent crime in the city. That includes the new violence interrupters starting to hit the streets. News 8's David Williams live now with more. David, good evening to you. Good evening to you. I'm standing in zip code 46208. This neighborhood is one of the neighborhoods where that work is supposed to formally start sometime this week. The nonprofit group Indy Public Safety Foundation has contracted with the city to train six people as violence interrupters. We first told you about this program last week. The interrupters will go into areas where people ages 16 to 35 are at the highest risk of potentially becoming involved in violence or becoming a victim and physically interrupting or stopping that cycle. These interrupters have already been doing this work for years but are supposed to formally start back on the streets this week. Now after this weekend and shooting where six people were killed. I asked violence interrupter Shane Shepard how he does it. You gotta kinda have a pulse for what your community needs are. And if you can figure out a way to supply some of those needs, you build relationships with the people who might end up in situations like this. So I even, I knew that young man, the young man uh, who's supposedly been arrested. I don't know his, what didn't happen with him, but I knew him 
from the music scene, the music industry with my son from a couple years back. So I can see how if you don't catch these young men at certain times and specific gaps and make sure that they understand A, what life means and what it's worth, or B, make sure they got some economical stimulation in their life, it could easily go wrong. It could have been my son. My son is the exact same age and he come from the exact same environment. So our job is to build relationships with the mothers, the baby mothers, the auntie, whoever is the most influential person in that young man's life. The violence interrupters have already been doing this work for years. Again, they are back on the streets this week. Now, all new at six, more specific ways this violence can be interrupted, and also some ways that these interrupters are becoming resources for people who need them the most. For now, we're live in Indianapolis. I'm David Williams. Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook.